Hi everybody, uh, Robert here with Odd Random Thoughts and uh, we've been talking about backup solutions a little bit uh, in the last video and so today I wanted to go over a really really cool program that I found and best of all it's free and um, a lot of you may be aware of this this software already uh, but it's something I stumbled upon because I was looking for something uh, that would actually sync my files uh, from my Drobo SAN to uh, my Western Digital my book because that's where I keep a secondary backup of, of uh, all my profile documents videos downloads all that stuff and I have a lot of other storage items on it as well but um, it I was looking for something that would do more of a real-time sync uh, because the smartware software that's in the Western Digital My Book uh, just runs backups. You can set it on a schedule, but I noticed, and some of you may like this, but uh, for what I do, I don't really care for this process. But what it was doing was it would back up everything, and then let's say I deleted something uh, from my documents directory. Well, when it ran the backup again, it would remove that from uh, the drive as far as I could see. Um, but if you go in to restore the file, it would still hold an extra copy of that uh, on the drive. So if you wanted to restore it later, say you accidentally deleted it, uh, then it would still be there. Well, the problem with that for me was is that eventually over time I'm going to have all these reserve copies backed up on that drive that are going to be taking up space and <clears throat> personally I don't really want that um, because if I delete something nine times out of ten I meant to delete it and besides that uh, every week or two I rsync uh, copies over to a NAS for free server so I have other backups if I happen to delete something and I need it back I can get it so I just wanted something that would keep up with changes on the go and something that would start with Windows and run and uh, I found that and it's in a program called Free File Sync uh, and I found it uh, searching through Google and uh, you can go to freefilesync.org and we'll go to the web browser now so you can take a look um, but it's really cool software uh, here's their website uh, it's a free download uh, you can get it for uh, pretty much any any OS that you want uh, they have it for Mac and Linux um, but if you just go to freefilesync.org and then you can uh, download it you click on the download button and you'll see here you can get either the Windows setup uh, Mac OS X and they have it for Ubuntu, Debian, OpenSUSE uh, and they have the source codes too so and it kind of reminds me of rsync uh, in the way it keeps track of, of everything that's going on uh, I'll open the program here for you real quick and you can take a look um, and it's real easy to set up um, basically all you have to do is uh, once you've installed it is you go to uh, your this is generally this side on the left is um, the relative paths for what's on the machine that you want to send to the backup source so like here I picked uh, these directories on my X drive which is the SAN and then over here I pick a corresponding folder on the backup drive and you can click here on the settings icon and uh, it gives you several variants that uh, it can compare by uh, either file time and size uh, file size only or file content which does a bit by bit comparison and that of course takes a lot longer to do uh, but if you wanted to use that option instead you could and then you can also filter uh, like you can include all files but then exclude 
like your system volume information, your recycle bin stuff, and those annoying desktop.ini and thumbs.db files that always show up in your backups. Uh, you can exclude those, which I've, these are all defaults, and that has worked well for me. Um, and then what it's going to do when it runs is it's going to compare the two directories, find out what's different, and then it's going to synchronize. So, and there's multiple ways you can do that. Uh, you can uh, do two-way here to where it'll mirror each drive. So let's say you have two drives and, and you work from both of those drives. Whichever drive has the newest file on it, it's going to sync with the opposing machine. So you'll always have the same files. So let's say you've got you and, and a partner are working on uh, some coding or working on some documents together. Uh, you could set this up if you're on the same network to synchronize between your machines. So let's say they work on it between certain hours of the day and then you work on it uh, the other half of the day. Well, whenever they're working on it, it would sync any changes they made to your machine and then if you when you do your work and update your files they would be newer timestamps and larger file size or less it would sync back to their machine so you would always both have uh, the exact same copy of the file uh, or you can use a mirror function which will take the left side of the directories you have listed and mirror them to the right side which is what I use uh, because I'm just wanting to sync exact copies of what I have on this machine to the backup drive. And then you have uh, update. Uh, it'll just copy any new and updated files to the right folder. And then you can also set up your own custom rules for synchronization. Uh, this detect move files. Uh, if you go to the more information like it says here, uh, it's able to detect moved files on one side and quickly apply that change rather than deleting and re-adding a file, um, which is a little bit slower, um, but it will create a database file um, to, cre to uh, compare the file systems with it. Um, and it says here that the two-way variant already creates the database files, therefore detection of move files is always active. So if you're using two-way, uh, then it's already going to be doing that. Uh, the mirror variant, however, does not need the database files to find synchronization, synchronization directories. So detection of move files is uh, not available by default. So like in my case, I'm using the mirror function. Well, it doesn't need uh, it doesn't need the option to detect move files because it's already taken care of that. Uh, and then you can uh, generally what it does when it swaps out files or resyncs something, it will move the old files either to the recycle bin you can check here, or you can have them permanently removed uh, when they're overwritten, uh, or you can specify a specific folder you want all the old files to move to. So if in fact you did want to have a reserved copy, you could use this versioning option. And then you can uh, either have a pop-up window for errors or tell it to ignore. And then when you run it, it's going to pop up a dialog uh, and you can have it to sh close that dialog uh, as soon as the synchronization is finished. Or you can have it log off the machine, stand by or shut down the machine. Um, now there's a few cool things about this. <clears throat> you can either save uh, just a regular file for this or you can save what's called a batch file. Uh, and the batch files can be ran either on uh, through the task scheduler. Uh, we can go back here and look at this. Uh, like it, it tells you how to do all this stuff. Uh, schedule a batch job. Um, it'll tell you how to schedule a batch job, a batch job, and uh, set it up in the Windows Task Scheduler. 
uh, to run automatically. Um, there's also, it comes with what's called real-time sync, which is just a little small program that you can add to your task scheduler and you can set it to to uh, synchronize by so many seconds. So like mine I have it set to synchronize every 10 seconds and I point it uh, I'll actually open this and show you uh, let's see this free fall sync so when you're setting up the uh, the action you tell it where the real-time sync executable is at and then you give it an argument to run this batch file so let's uh, let me show you a better like if we were to add a new you would put in the real-time sync uh, executable here and then under add arguments is where you would add the location of the batch file that you saved from free file sync which in my case is the WD my, my book sync um, which is this file here and in order to do that you would just save a batch job if you want to save just a regular job like this one I have for Windows image backups uh, that I only run whenever I have a new image I create so I can just select it and then uh, I can hit compare and nothing has changed so otherwise it would normally show a list here of what was going to get changed or what was going to get moved and then at that once this the list is is uh, generated here you just click synchronize and it'll move everything over um, but you want to be sure and look here and make sure like I have mine set to mirror but if you wanted to change any of that you could just click the little gear icon and you can change it here but this this program is full of options but it's yet it's real simple to use um, so I, I would recommend taking a look at that if you're looking for something that uh, does more of a, a sync job instead of just a, a normal backup routine. Uh, it's very, very customizable. Their website has got tons of help. Uh, it's also got a forum you can visit. Um, talks about volume shadow copy and all that kind of stuff like for, for locked files. Um, one thing I will tell you, <clears throat> like on mine here, uh, when I saved my batch, I went ahead and told it uh, on completion to close the dialog, run minimized, that way it's not going to pop up the program when it runs, and also uh, I'm saving log files so I can just take a glance and uh, see that those are actually executing properly. And then uh, I have it to set to ignore errors, and the reason I do that is because it's also syncing my uh, Thunderbird profile so when I have Thunderbird open it tries to sync that profile well Thunderbird locks certain files uh, while it's open so and when this uh, real-time sync is checking every 10 seconds then it, it would keep popping up the error message if I just tell it to ignore errors then it'll it'll still try to sync every 10 seconds but it'll just pop up an error log file in the logs file directory that's listed here and then when I close out Thunderbird the next sync will go ahead and complete successfully and, and it's nothing that I ever see or, or have to mess with so it just depends on your situation um, really the only reason you can also tell uh, tell the program to lock uh, certain files like uh, trying to see where that was at oh yeah it's here in uh, the options you can tell it to copy locked files uh, which some of this stuff you would like when I copy my Windows image backups I have to run this as administrator so keep that in mind if you have 
certain uh, things you're trying to transfer that may require administrative privileges, uh, you may want to run uh, the free file sync program as administrator. Um, but uh, you can tell it to copy uh, locked files, all that kind of stuff. But of course, I don't really want to do that uh, in this case. The only reason you would not want to copy uh, locked files is like if you had two people that were syncing to the same directory and when they're working on something the file may be locked you know there's certain situations like that but like in my case I'm the only user that's syncing to these directories so um, I don't have any issues like that but uh, anyway I uh, just thought I would uh, give a heads up on this like I say it's a free program and uh, this is not I'm not any kind of sponsored video or anything like that nobody's paying me to to bring this to your attention but I just thought since we we're kind of on a roll with uh, backup solutions I would pop that out there uh, because this is something I discovered since my last video so you might want to check this out uh, it's really easy like I said to set up so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail just uh, check here they've got a full users manual on their website where you go to download it and uh, anyway I hope uh, hope this has been helpful uh, to somebody and um, as always uh, click that like button down there somewhere if uh, you found anything in this video that was useful to you if you haven't subscribed already feel free to subscribe other than that I'll catch you in the next video y'all have a good one bye bye